Hey guys, it's Matt here. And in this video, we're gonna be discussing if the iPod Touch 7 is better to buy or would be worth it to buy an iPhone 7. Now first, let's get the facts out of the way. The iPod Touch is a newer device, but is technically worse than the iPhone 7. This device has the A10 chip with two gigabytes of RAM. This specific device has 32 gigabytes of storage, but you can go all the way up to 256 gigabytes. The iPhone 7 also has the A10 chip with two gigabytes of RAM, and it also can go up to 256 gigs of storage. So you're probably like, well, these devices are pretty much the same, right? Well, no, they're not. The iPod Touch 7 is quite a bit worse than the iPhone 7 in a few areas and better in some other areas. Now the iPod Touch 7th generation is obviously smaller. If I flip this guy around, you can see here, it's basically the size of an iPhone 5. In fact, let me pull up an iPhone 5 here for perspective. You can see it's pretty much exactly the same. Unfortunately, this iPhone 5 does not work. I did a battery replacement on it and then the touchscreen stopped responding. So I'm gonna need to order a replacement for that. Here's the iPhone 7 here and you can see that it looks well, it's kind of hard to tell because of the lighting, but it's basically like an iPhone 6 and an iPhone 8 hybrid, which makes sense because that would be a 7. <laughs> but yeah, the device looks very nice. Pretty modern, I would say. It kind of is similar to the iPhone SE besides the glass back. Both of these devices can run iOS 15.7.2 as their latest OS. In fact, the iPhone SE with a chip from the year prior with the A9 chip can also run iOS 15 just fine. However, the chips are not the same. The iPod Touch 7th generation's A10 chip is actually downclocked over the iPhone 7s. Th this device is slower than an iPhone 7 is. In fact, I can actually notice this when using apps. The more powerful chip that this phone has actually goes a long way in helping its performance. Alrighty, so with that all in mind, let's dig into these devices. I'll unlock the iPhone 7 first and then I'll get the iPod Touch unlocked, and you can already see immediately the iPod Touch does not have Touch ID, so I'm gonna to need to type in the passcode. And we are in to both devices. Now you can see here immediately, the iPhone 7 has quite a bit more home screen space, and that's because it's got a bigger screen. Both of these devices are technically capable of running the same things, but specifically the iPhone 7 would run stuff better because it's got a bigger screen, so developers wouldn't have to optimize as much for a smaller screen like they do with the iPod Touch or the iPhone SE. Now both of these devices will play music and will play them very well. And one leg up that the iPod Touch has is that it's got a headphone jack. And for people who know the iPhone 7, it doesn't. The iPhone 7 was the first iPhone to ship without a headphone jack. And the big reason for why the iPhone 7 didn't have a headphone jack was, well, there wasn't really a great reason. It was just courage. So yeah, that's not great. But the iPod Touch 7 does have it. So this is the newest device that you can fit in a pocket that has a headphone jack. However, I don't see not having a headphone jack as that big of a deal. For me, I always use Bluetooth headphones on my devices anyways. So it's not that big of a problem because I can still charge my devices while listening to music. As most of the time I listen to music while I'm going for a run or a bike ride or whatever. It's mostly when I'm out about doing my own thing. I don't need the device to be plugged in all the time. If you do use wired headphones, and I do use them like on the occasion, I have KZ ES4s. I do actually use them pretty often. They do make dongles that will let you both charge and listen to music. So for me, that's not that big of a deal. I understand that it would annoy a lot of people though. So if you are that kind of person that would love to have a headphone jack on device, the iPod Touch is the only option of these two. However, the iPhone 7, I can very much state, is superior in almost every other aspect. So let's say you wanna use this device for something other than music. And that's basically me, as I like to use my devices for multiple things. So like for me, if I'm having a device on me, I still wanna be able to use social media apps like Reddit, Discord, whatever, iMessage. I use that stuff all of the time. On the iPod Touch, not only is it smaller, which means that your keyboard is quite a bit smaller than on an iPhone 7, it's also less performant. And you can see that very much in the Discord app, which is not optimized at all. Yeah, the iPhone 7 runs it perfectly, the iPod Touch 7 struggles a little bit and will lag occasionally when sending stuff. And that only makes sense given that the device is downclocked by a significant margin. For having the same chip, the iPhone 7 blows the iPod Touch 7 out of the water. Moving on, both the back and front camera on the iPhone 7 is superior. On the iPod Touch, we can actually go into settings to check the different resolutions that this supports. On the iPod Touch, you can see you can record at 1080p at 30 frames per second. Now on the iPhone, however, you can actually go into the camera settings here, wherever that is. And if I hit record video, you can see this can actually record not only at 1080p at 60fps, but can also record in 4K. That's a 
pretty significant upgrade in terms of cameras. And that makes sense. This iPhone has a 12 megapixel camera. Well, this iPod Touch only has an eight megapixel camera. Just to prove what I'm saying, stop it. Just to prove what I'm saying just a little bit more. If I go to my iPhone SE here, which is the same physical size, and I choose camera. This device also has a 12 megapixel back camera. It can also record at 4K at 30 FPS. The camera on this device is very lackluster to say the least. It is the same camera as found in the iPod Touch 6 generation and that used an A8 processor. Do keep in mind as well that the iPhone 6 could not record in 4K but it could record at 1080p at 60 frames per second which I have no doubt this iPod could do but Apple locks it out for some reason. Finally if we go into the slow-mo settings of these devices this isn't really a big indicator where you can see here it could record at 1080p at 120 frames per second or 720p at 240 and the 7 can do the same the ipod touch does support slow-mo and there's no setting for it because you can only record at 720p at 120 frames per second you can see that right up there. I think that's mostly a software limitation, but it could be a camera limitation as well. Along with, now let's get to the parts when you're going to listen to music or go for a run or whatever. Let's go through the parts that actually matter. And that would be battery life and durability. The iPod Touch 7th generation is not that durable in comparison to the iPhone 7. If you watch a video from Jerry Rig Everything, you will see that this iPod Touch actually fails his durability test. And while I think, yes, he is quite harsh on the devices he tests, it is very important to see if a device would pass, let's Say a bend test. Now, what about water resistance? Well, the iPhone 7 was the first iPhone to actually have an IP rating. This phone can actually be submerged underwater, technically, for 30 minutes down to one meter. The iPod Touch, on the other hand, this device does not actually have an IP rating. So if you get this device wet, it'll most likely be okay. But if you submerge it, it could very well break and probably will. So if you're going for walks out in the rain, often I would suggest that you get an iPhone 7 because it is rated to survive being drenched in water. And I have gone out on runs where I didn't expect it to rain and then it just downpoured. So I was running home in pouring rain and having a water resistant phone is much nicer in my opinion because then I wouldn't have to worry about this thing breaking because it's designed for that. It wouldn't break under those conditions or at least it's not supposed to. Now let's actually do a sound test here. Now this is obviously going to be just a little rough because I don't have like a mic set up. So it would just be from my phone mic, but you can probably hear the difference. So you can see here on both devices, I've got songs from the YouTube audio library. I've got a song from Diamond Ortis, it's called Ubiquitous. I use it in the background of my videos sometimes. Let's do a few sound tests. So they're both playing right now, I have both of them muted. Let's put the volume up on the iPhone and you can hear how that sounds and we're gonna do probably 75% volume. I don't know if you can really tell a difference on video, but yes, this is quite a bit quieter in person and does not sound nearly as good as the iPhone does. That only makes sense because this has stereo speakers because you got one on the top and one on the bottom. And obviously this doesn't have that. It's just right on the bottom there. So it doesn't sound nearly as good. And if we put the volume all the way up, that's as loud as this gets. And this is as loud as this one gets. The speakers on the iPhone no doubt smash the ones on the iPod, which should not be terribly surprising, but it is what it is. Obviously, you should be listening through your headphones. That is not a big deal. Now, let's actually go over a feature that a lot of people do not discuss. What happens if you were to get stranded with one of these devices, even this phone without a SIM card? If you get stranded with an iPod Touch, you are screwed. There is nothing that this iPod can reach out for unless it is connected to Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. This has no kind of cellular connectivity. It does definitely does not have satellite connectivity. So if you get stranded, you're screwed. On the iPhone 7, however, even without a SIM card, you have access to emergency SOS. I'm not gonna obviously slide that. So on this phone, even without a SIM card, you would be fine because this device can reach out to cellular networks and even without a SIM card in, 
you could get help if you needed it. So in my opinion, that is extremely important. If I'm out listening to music or something and I don't want to get bothered by other people, I still want a way to reach out and get help in case something happens. iPod Touch does not do that. If you push the power button five times, it doesn't do anything. The feature is just not built into iOS on the iPod Touch, which is not surprising. That's just a limitation of this device and I have tons of type in my passcode now. <laughs> Take on it. So yeah, that's just a few of the features that the iPhone 7 has over the iPod Touch. There are plenty more, along with that app support is just going to just be genuinely better on the iPhone because you've got GPS and you've got other stuff, so you've got better support in that case. However, if you're listening to music, and that's all you're using an iPod Touch for, then the iPod Touch is fine. It's just fine. It's not better than the iPhone 7 in most cases, though with the headphone jack, I would bet that others would argue that it is better. And in that case, I would absolutely agree. I would still use an iPhone 7 over an iPod Touch 7. And another reason for this is because of cost. iPod Touches, since they've been discontinued, are actually getting rare. Since Apple does not sell them anymore, and well, the iPod line is now dead as a whole, meaning that in order to actually use an iPod Touch, you have to buy one of these. You cannot buy something brand new anymore. So you either have to buy used or still unsealed, which don't do that, by the way. That's gonna be way overpriced. So yeah, let's actually do a bit of experimentation here. I go and pull up, let's just say eBay. So let's look up the average price for the iPod Touch. You can see here the prices of this device are, well, quite expensive to say the least. If I grab, let's just say, a seventh generation iPod Touch, and this seller is way overpriced too, but all of them are. So let's do a seventh generation iPod Touch, and let's do storage capacity of 256 gigabytes. This is a 32 gigabyte iPod Touch 7th generation. And obviously when you're buying used, you gotta associate all the risks for that. So these offers might not even be legitimate offers. But you can see here, 189 bucks for a 32 gigabyte one of these. These devices have really held on to their value. I paid $200 brand new for this iPod Touch with 32 gigabytes. So a $10 decrease is good for sellers, not great for buyers. Now, just to show in perspective how much an iPhone 7 would be worth it over an iPod Touch. Not only is this device faster, has water resistance, it has better battery life. This device has almost double the capacity of this device. This iPhone is a 256 gigabyte iPhone 7. With that in mind, how much did this cost? Maybe $300? Maybe $350? $400? No, not even close to that. This phone, in its condition, you can see it's in really good condition. 100 bucks. Enough said, really. The iPhone 7 is better than the iPod Touch, physically, besides the headphone jack, has more storage than the iPod Touch at a cheaper price. That by itself is enough for me to completely ignore this product and go straight for an iPhone 7. That is exactly what I did. I want something that'll last for a long time, that will be durable, that can listen to music just fine. Obviously any iPhone can really do that, but since I use Apple Music, it has to be something newer than an iPhone 4, so I decided I'll go with the 7 because it just lost support, which means that apps are still going to be optimized for iOS 15 and they will be for a little while. And this device is durable and it works. It does everything I need it to do and more. And this device will keep me going for the next few years, if not next five or six years, maybe even longer than that. That's my opinion anyways. I think the iPhone 7 is roughly the best phone that you can get. The iPhone 6S, goes up to 128 gigabytes. And while yes, this runs iOS 15 and you get a headphone jack, so that might actually be worth it to you for that. It does not have water resistance. It is not nearly as durable. And honestly, I don't like the design of the 6S over the 7. I think the 7 looks quite nice. The 6S is kinda, kinda meh, but that shouldn't matter to a lot of people. Having the 256 gigs of storage though is a huge help. So yeah, that's about it for this video. If you liked it, then Hit the like button and get subscribed if you like the content that you see on this channel. <sighs> I probably will do a video on using this thing for a week, if not a month, because, well, why not? The iPhone 7 is literally one of my favorite iPhones of all time. With the aluminum back, which I think looks really stylish, even though you don't have wireless charging, so that part does suck. And honestly, iOS 15 is still a very modern OS, I don't think... I think if you have an iPhone 7, and my grandpa actually does, then you don't need to upgrade just yet. I think the 7 is still a really good phone. Tell me in the comments what you guys think, if I am wrong, which, I mean, honestly, my videos are very heavily opinionated. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys all later. Bye.